So now I'm going to show you how to put the new brake calipers back onto the rear axle and how to reassemble everything. So you can see here I've got one mounted on to, onto the disc and when they come in the box they do not have this cross tube made up and fitted to the caliper. You do get a piece of tube but I've made that in the exact model of the old one where it crosses above the handbrake bolts. This is for this side and here's the first one. I've got it on loosely and just to show you it's a 5 8 bolt that fixes there's two of those which had the wires on them and it is impossible to get your hand in into the gaps here to hold the bolt in place so what you have to do is to use something thin like a like a knife line it up with the bolt hole and push it on the end of the bolt so something thin like a knife and once it's in the hole you can then gradually and it is a slow process tighten the bolts up once you've got them started, as I have on this side, you can take the knife away and tighten those bolts up. Now those two, those two bolts have got to be very tight. You saw when we took them off, we had to hammer them to get them undone. It's not possible to get a torque wrench in there, so you're going to have to use this spanner and tighten them up as much as you can and then fit the fixing wire so that they cannot come loose. Once you've done that and tighten them up, you might want to take the opportunity to put the pads in there and the little fixing bolts. The fixing pins come with the new caliper, so we've got a new pair there because they do corrode and my old ones were bent as well, so we're going to use those. And then once you've, once you've done that, You then want to refit the drive shaft. Now, you might remember there were three shims on this side, which I kept all together. I put them back on those bolts, and I noticed that there was a fourth shim still attached to the drive shaft there. Now what I want to do is to put a little bit of copper, copper slip or copper ease onto those bolts so that it makes it a little bit easier to get the nuts on. So I know these are quite difficult. And it may also help you next time you have to do this job although hopefully it won't be for a while So I hope you saw that, I was able to uh, put the shims on, drop the half shaft back on in place, and then I'm going to replace the four self-locking nuts.
just to remind you that it's very important that these four bolts that hold the discs on and the two bolts that hold the caliper on are tight. They are large bolts. This one is 11 16 spanner. And the reason they are large is because over the years, Jaguar have found that there's a lot of stress on these bolts, so they must be tight. And that means locking that shaft up with some sort of lever, as I've done here, and then getting all your force onto these, these nuts. And really tightening them up. As a general rule of thumb, a half inch nut has a break, the, the, the bolt in a half inch nut has a breaking stress of over one ton. So uh, the bigger ones are there for a good reason and that is that there is a lot of force there or there can be depending on what you're doing with the car. So make sure they're really tight and uh, if they're not tight and you go racing they can work loose.